It's time for the Chips and Salsa Show. The only show about Latinos for Latinos. And did we mention Latinos? It's the Latissima. Latinos come in all flavors, shapes, and sizes. You don't have to be Latino to enjoy Chips and Salsa. Super low, Chips and Salsa. Welcome to your Chips and Salsa show. This is Don Jorge El Alacran. We're in Tempe at our studios in Tempe. And with us, we have today Alice Lara from New Mexico and Zeke Rodriguez co-hosting from New Mexico. And we have a special guest with us, Rachel Rachel Alexander. And uh, a lot of people know you and a lot of people um, are going to hear from you. Uh we're we're gonna mention a birthday real quick uh, to get it out of the way. Uh, we have a birthday of our dear friend uh, Martin Gonzalez. He was one of our co-hosts on the Chips and Salsa show, the original, and it's his birthday today. Alice, do you want to talk a little bit about that real quick? Yeah, you know, uh, Martin's been a good friend of ours. He's like you said, he was one of the original chipsters for the Chips and Salsa show. In fact, when we were all sitting around figuring out a way to start. The- show we didn't know what we're going to call it like man eh, burrito banter that's corny taco <laughs> talk and it was taco. martin who came up with the chips and salsa idea because yeah you know it's, it should be very very informal like you're sitting around chatting about politics and culture wars whatever and uh, kudos to him uh he is in texas now so and eventually we hope to have him on as a guest as well so we can hear from the political scene over there but happy birthday to our good friend Martin Gonzalez, Martin, like he said, happy Martin birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, birthday Martin. Uh, now, Rachel, could you just introduce yourself to our uh, to our chipsters? Uh, just a short bio or just introduction? Well, I describe myself as a recovering attorney. I'm the former Maricopa County Elections attorney. I've been a prosecutor and I now am a writer, a full-time journalist. I write for the Arizona Sun-Times, and I write opinion articles for Town Hall and other sites. Wonderful. Yep, great job. Uh, And you will not find, Rachel, you are one of the most thorough journalists. It's so hard to find good writers, and I just just love when you have your stuff out. I try to read all of your articles. You're so sweet. Well, it's that awful perfectionist personality. (laughs) and And she's so busy. It, I'm, we're lucky to have her on our show today. Thank you for coming, and it's going to be a great show. Alice, do you want to start it off with the debate? Uh, what we're ha- the debates we're having uh, tomorrow. Yeah, we wanted to mention because it's it's all in the news. Of course, tomorrow Wednesday, Fox is going to have the first presidential debate, Republican one, and of course, a big controversy is: Will Trump be there? Or will he not? So the latest that I hear, and update me anybody if you've got something more current. But evidently, uh, Donald Trump Jr. was going to be a surrogate. And they said, no, nope. Fox said, nope, 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 nope. That can't happen. So I've asked a lot of friends, people that follow politics, should he, shouldn't he? What, you know, what's going on? And we, we have to talk about it because that's our national GOP news that's coming up. Rachel, what are your thoughts? What do you think should or shouldn't happen? Well, you know, that's funny you ask because our Arizona Sun-Times had an article out today saying that Carrie Lake's going to be the surrogate for Trump. Wow. <laughs> that would be that would be interesting. Well, she's really good. I always say that she is the most underestimated um, political out there because everybody thinks, oh, she's this beautiful broadcaster, you know, and they think that's what she's about. No. She is so underestimated for how brilliant she is. And her experience in media has made her so good at just slamming anyone, especially the media, when it comes to stuff. Well, I agree. What I would do, if I were Trump, when I get elected, I would so like to make her my spokesperson because she could handle that press, boy. Is is, Is it possible that she can be a surrogate or no? If they say no or... They, I think they've said no surrogates, but I had not heard that Carrie Lake was considering doing that. That's that's news to me. Have I mean, the article, the article isn't really clear if she's actually like going to be up on the stage. Maybe she's just going to be in attendance. Maybe um, she's going to be, just, oh. you know, answering questions from reporters after the debate. Um, it's not real clear, but maybe, you know, maybe she's not really participating in the actual debate. Well, if you had to advise... President Trump, what would you tell him to do? Me? You, Rachel. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's funny you mentioned that because a good friend of mine, um, Chris Tremolia, just wrote an article 
um, about how uh, uh, Trump should, you know, participate in the debate. And he asked me what I thought, and I disagreed because if I was Trump and I was ahead in the landslide, um, I, he can only go downhill from there. Yeah. So why would he want to debate? Yeah, because all those uh, pundits on uh, ABC, NBC, CNN, they all say, complaining that he's not going to be there. And uh, I think there's a reason that they're complaining because they want to they want to make him look bad for not being there. I think, like you, Rachel, that uh, he really doesn't have to be there, but he could have surrogates. They can interview the surrogates right after the debates and say, what did you think on this? Or when he said this, what did you think? You know, and they could, you know, kind of uh, they they could talk for him, but not, you know, uh, I think he's doing the right thing. So I think he's going to miss the first two debates if I rem if I read it correctly. There's an argument also to be made, and then I'm going to toss it to you, that by him not being there, I mean, this dude, he's always so strategic. He's still grabbing the headlines, and he's probably not going to even be there. But who's the attention on? It's on Trump. Yeah, that's the strategy. Is they want to basically push all the other rhinos out of the way so the party can just focus on Trump. And this is one way to leverage his following, Tucker Carlson's following, so they can just show the country how horrible you know, Chris Christie and all these dudes are. And DeSantis just keeps tanking. So I think that's going to make it worse for them and better for Trump. There's so many more debates coming up. He can he can embellish in these debates later on as he gets closer. Oh, yeah. And I, I they, he's he, they're going to have um, the Indian gentleman. What's his name? The, the one that, yeah, he's going to be in the middle and DeSantis is going to be next to him. So I think they're going to kind of focus on those two. But both of them, they have skeletons. Uh, they just had an article about the, the the what's his name again? I can't even remember. Ramaswamy. Don't Ramaswamy. 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 Ramaswamy noodles. Swami. Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy noodles. Swami. Ramaswamy noodles. Swami. I like that. Uh, <laughs> Ramaswamy noodles. That he got he got money from Soros while he was in really? college. Yeah, he got um. I had not heard that. Wow. Yeah, that's not good. No, no, not allegedly. He got it, and he was. They said he was a millionaire. But he said he needed that money. It was like nine hundred thousand dollars. But he said it wasn't from sorrow Soros, but from his um, uncle. So, but everybody's saying it was from Soros, and they um, they kind of criticize him because he was he he was. Uh, I think what I read, he had a he filed his taxes. He had a million. The first year he got a million. The second year another two million. So he was a millionaire. And uh, he actually accepted. And he said his uh, chief of staff is saying that if why why wouldn't you accept it if you're financial if you're good with finances you could uh, it, that would you would be good as a president if you did stuff like that. And so I don't know. I just didn't like the idea that he accepted money from Soros. Uh, you know, and you know he knew what he was doing. So he's denying it. So it came from Soros. Oh. What were you gonna? 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 Oh, your sound is repeating, George. I don't know if ours is, but let's toss it maybe to Rachel since we have limited time with her. So I was just saying though, what about these rumors that Vivek is just in the race to help Trump? That he's you know eventually going to drop out and endorse him. Um, so I think you know all this this effort to keep Trump out of the debate when you've got this Vivek who really enjoys Trump being in the debate. Uh, exactly. you know, I, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna hurt Trump at all. That's no. good. That's good. Uh, I, and uh, Trump's watching the debate to see who would be a good uh, vice president candidate candidate for him. And he's even said it. He said, you know, he's going to see who steps up. So I like it. I mean, um, what's this about the, an attorney being disbarred? Uh, attorney, could you explain that, Rachel? Yeah. So one thing I've been really focusing on, you know, as a former attorney myself, who the bar came after and suspended my license for six months because I went after corrupt Maricopa County supervisors and judges. So uh, I've been covering this disbarment trial of former Trump attorney John Eastman, who's one of the preeminent conservative constitutional lawyers in the country. And so there were a couple weeks in June 
um, of the trial. And then it got postponed because it went longer than they thought it would and um, trying to get around everybody's schedule to, you know, reset it. Uh, it wasn't going to happen until this week. And so I got all ready to, you know, live tweet the trial today and turned out John Eastman because he's been indicted along with Trump in Georgia, had to go to Georgia to be arrested today. So it's just out of control if you know anything about John Eastman. I mean, if John Eastman is giving Trump advice about the 2020 election and he is the preeminent conservative constitutional lawyer in the country, it's not illegal. It's not bad attorney. It's not criminal. And so what they're doing is just atrocious. So I plan to cover every single tape of the trial again and write articles about it. And, you know, now I'm focusing on the, the whole bogus prosecution, which I'm writing about as well. Wow, wow. that's huge. I, we're going to count on you because I know you're going to be so thorough. That's a story to watch. And so, Rachel, while we have you, what, what does it look like for him to get out of that? I mean, what what maneuvers does he have? Because they're going to arrest him. He's going to be in jail. Obviously, it's a fraud and a sham. What what is he planning on doing to get out of that, those those cuffs? So I don't think they're going to keep any of the ones they arrest in jail for long. I could be wrong, but usually when it's like these highly political protests that everybody knows are bogus, you know, like with the former, you know, indictments of Trump, we've already had, uh, what, three before this one, um, mm -hmm. you know, they're just going to, it's all ceremonial. So I think he'll be out of jail. The problem is I do believe that a lot of them are going to end up being convicted. And I write about why they're convicted, but the long-term goal is the Supreme Court. I don't wow. believe there is any way the U.S. Supreme Court, which is majority Republican, lots of them were appointed by Trump, they're not going to let any of these bogus prosecution convictions stand. Well, how long does it take to get to the Supreme Court? What's that looking like, the time frame? It, a lot of it depends on the judges. These judges can stall the stuff. I mean, we're seeing it here in, in Arizona with all the election challenges from the 2022 election. They're just drawn out and drawn out and drawn out, and they don't need to do that. They can hurry it up. But I think these judges are so corrupt that they will drag it out. It will go on for at least a couple of years. Look at the former prosecution of, say, Congressman Tom DeLay from Texas. I think that went on for 12 years until he was finally exonerated. Wow. Okay, so the Supreme Court isn't the, I mean, it's a good backup plan, but it seems like they can drag it out and bypass the Supreme Court to a certain degree. That's where it gets kind of problematic. Um, you know, sometimes the Supreme Court will accept cert early from other cases, but usually, you know, there has to be like a reason and ex ex exigency, hopefully I pronounced that right. I mean, some imperative reason why it needs to happen sooner. And I I don't, I, I really don't see it happening. I feel like it's- it it As the Supreme Court, can they say, hey, we want to see this and now we're going to bypass whatever these judges are doing. We want to get this case on our docket now. Because I know on local courts, they can do that. Well, I think it has to go to appellate first, right? Appellate judges first. You have to go through a trial court, almost always an appellate court. Um, I, I have heard of cases where it's gone from the trial court up to the Supreme Court, I believe, where it didn't go go through the appeals court. But that's rare if it even happens. Wow. And it, you think because it's a presidential election and if he says it's a, a, a political interference, it might rate that to where the Supreme Court has to make a decision on that or or... Right. Well, I believe the grounds that the Supreme Court are going to take uh, cert are going to be a violation, some type of violation of federal law. OK. And, and at the same time, we have the Hunter Biden thing and the Biden uh, criminal uh, conspiracy. I mean, you got two big uh, cases coming up before the election, a, a president that might be charged with the uh, um criminal uh uh yeah, what are they charging him with <laughs> what, are, what are they even charging him with it's... oh do you want to go over the rico laws and how <laughs> bogus and vague they are i mean you can charge you know a ham sandwich with a rico indictment i mean we all know there it's just a lot of it is just bogus process crimes wire fraud mail fraud you know all that means is oh geez somebody while well, they really were committing a crime dropped the letter in the mail i mean it's just the most bs type of criminal charge you could bring against somebody 
So you, Rachel, the recovering attorney, like you always like to call yourself, uh, let's let's do talk about Biden and that son of a Biden, okay? Uh, do you, the question is always, is that going to go anywhere? What's going to happen? You know, we get hope and then we try not to let our hopes up too high. But here comes election year for all intents and purposes, especially with this debate kickoff tomorrow. Here we go for the presidential election. Any Wouldn't prediction, any expectations about that? Wouldn't they have to impeach him first and then all hell breaks loose or what? Well, they can go after Hunter Biden. And what I think they're going to do, and I've been predicting this all along, what they're going to do is they're going to make a show like they actually did something with Hunter, but it's not going to be much. So number one, he's never going to be behind bars. It's going to be, you know, some low level probation deal. And, and everybody will just be able to blow it off and say, see, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Oh, <laughs> he's done. They have so much power, the Bidens. I mean, they really do. It's like it's like the Hillary Clintons all over again. The, you know what I mean? The Clinton crime family with all their power. Instead of the, instead of the uh, Clinton body count, it's the Hunter Biden crack count, I guess. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's not um, what it's built up to be, or is it? They're both highly criminal. That's for sure. And I highly recommend the Hunter Biden documentary that came out a few months ago. I mean, it is just creepy to see how these people live who are just always high and always getting prostitutes. I mean, I, I just atrocious. I mean, I don't even see how people can defend this guy. I mean, I, it almost makes you feel sorry for him because he's just so out of it all the time. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that yeah. because I just uh, probably a lot of you watched the hunt. Uh, it was RFK Jr. being interviewed by Tucker. And RFK Jr. says, you know, they denied him Secret Service protection, right? But there's Hunter Biden. He's got all kinds of protection. And for everything that we know he's done, we know he's done. And of course, you know, he can. He's the president's son that's living there. But kind of ironic. Kind of ironic. Well, he, you know, he probably actually really does have a lot of enemies. I mean, when you live in that illegal drug culture world, I mean, <laughs> not trying to defend the Secret Service protection for him. He should be paying for I like that you said that you kind of feel sorry for him, Rachel, because Roseanne Barr, you guys are probably familiar with her, she came out and she was praying for him, saying that she can see in his eyes that he wants to get out of that drug. He wants out. She, he just seems like a trapped child in those eyes, trapped in a, in a, in a world of addiction. So... I, I that's cool that you said that. I feel that. I feel that. And and I think that's a really good point. You know, that's they he has been used for a very, very long time. It's almost like a reach out for help because he's just getting caught on purpose. He's just finding crack everywhere, his laptop. I mean, it's like it's like subconsciously trying to get caught. Well, I mean, I always look at a lot of these children of rich, famous parents. I mean, some of the parents do a great job and they really try, but other parents just get so in, absolved with their own careers and obsessed with their own narcissism that they neglect the kids. I mean, look at his poor sister. She's had, you know, drug issues too, I believe. So, uh, you know, I just blame his parents. Sorry. I love that point too. Great point. It I like is, that too. And that is where the one really should go. I agree. Right? And who benefited from it? You know, uh, what was his name? Uh, what do they call him? The big guy? The, the big, big guy. guy. Yep, <laughs> the <Yeah>. big guy. <laughs> Um, Rachel, because I know you're limited on time. I know we don't have you forever, unfortunately. And we want you to come back again. Please, please, anytime, let us know. Go ahead and if you have uh, anything that we didn't cover that you'd like to cover and talk about because you're such a great source of information. Absolutely. Well, as we briefly touched on before the show started, I think it's, uh, you know, this latest article I'm writing tonight about this defamation case that our Maricopa County Rhino reporter Stephen Richer has filed against Carrie Lake because uh, Carrie Lake said, hey, look at these 300,000 ballots just suddenly, you know, appeared in the election. And so Stephen says that that is defamation. And he found these left wing uh, people who agreed to fund his lawsuit against her. I mean, I think they're probably driving it and he's kind of a useful tool. And so um, Carrie, in her motion to dismiss, has ASU, ASU's Law Center, is helping represent her against the defamation suit. That is absolutely huge. We all know how left-wing ASU is. There's no reason for them to jump in on the side of a very conservative oh, candidate. Yeah. To me, this screams volumes that she has a 
tremendous, um, you know, case to get this dismissed. Every attorney I've talked to says uh, he has absolutely zero case. And I think he's lucky he has his license on inactive status because there's nothing uh, the state bar hates more than a Republican attorney. And they don't like rhinos either. Wow. That really? is a huge story. Like Zeke says, it should be national news. It should be national news. Um, is, is, there, is there a countersuit for defamation on that? Because if they're going to spin wheels, can't they countersue that? You know, that's one of my specialties. Whenever I've done uh, some uh, litigation, I you can think of a good counterclaim. That's a good way to get people to drop a lawsuit as well. So um, off the top of my head, I, you know, I, I can't think of something, but I mean, the obvious default would be to file a bar complaint against him for filing a frivolous lawsuit. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and and she can also ask the judge for sanctions as well. Or, yeah, motion to disqualify you can do that too, right? If it's so if it's so if it's so egregious, that's so far off, it's not even close to defamation. That could be a motion to disqualify because they're not even competent. I don't know. I'm just trying to well, figure. Well, 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 and file bar complaints against Richard's attorneys as well. Yeah, right. Because and then they would be liable. Um, has Karen gone into that lawsuit at all? Yep. What has Carrie Lake? I'm sorry. Has Carrie Lake made a public comment, Rachel? Yes. Um, if you go to, uh, it's not out on our website yet, but if you go to Carrie Lake's Twitter feed, she's already commenting on how bogus it is. Good. You said maybe, uh. Carrie Lake might be a surrogate at the debates, or that's just talk right now? I mean, based on the article on our website, it sounds like it's more talk, like she's going to be in the audience, you know, obviously talking to reporters on Trump's behalf afterwards, um, because they are very close. Um, well, that, that's good. That That's a good thing. Um, I have a thing here on Katie Hobbs, and I'll read it. It says, Arizona... Uh, Governor Katie Hobbs just said that she wants President Trump indicted in Arizona. President Trump has already been indicted four times. Now Katie Hobbs wants to run an election interference campaign, just like the indictment in Georgia. But while Secretary of State Katie Hobbs ran her own election and pressured social media companies to censor conservatives, we need to try... We need every true mega patriot reading this email to respond now and add your name to a petition. When when asked if she wants AZ Attorney General Myers to follow in Georgia's footsteps, the AZ governor said, absolutely. Katie Hobbs just can't help herself. She wants to get in the Trump indictment dog pile. First, she silenced conservatives in her own election for Arizona. Now she wants president trump indicted what do you think uh rachel you know after she made those remarks um a reporter tried to follow up with her about it <laughs> she, yeah and her team backtracked and they said oh katie hobbs really wasn't talking about trump she was just talking about you know people who do crimes generally they should be so something weird is going <laughs> on there and i think i think she's kind of nervous i think she's really shaky nobody believes she's the real governor here so, <laughs> awesome. well, that prosecutor in Georgia did mention Arizona as one of the states that they were looking at uh, in the prosecution of Trump. So it makes sense that that would come up. Uh, and, that, you know, I I believe and I could be wrong, but I believe the next indictment is going to come down in Arizona from our alleged attorney general, Chris Mays. Wow. Um, Yep, she's already made statements about, you know, what she thought the wrongdoing was, blah, blah, blah. And and I think they're also going to go after our alternate slate of electors and all their attorneys and other people involved. I know there was yeah. at least one official with the Arizona Republican Party. Um, I, I think it's just a matter of days before we're going to see the indictments here. But what can we do, Rachel? What is the solution here? We're getting bombarded <laughs> with these rhinos and these crazy progressives that are just, you know, ransacking the legal system for this, you know, circus of a show they're making out of President Trump. What can we do to help with this? Well, I got all kinds of solutions. Um, Love so, that. 
you know, first of all, let's be a big mouse, whether we're journalists like me or citizen journalists or, you know, radio talk show hosts like you guys. Um, I think we just have to just keep blaring the message out. And then there's a few other things we can do, such as we have to start defending the attorneys, because I just heard today Giuliani can't find anyone to represent him in Georgia. So yeah. you know, they're disbarring all our attorneys, they're scaring all our attorneys. So we need to start infiltrating the state bars and start volunteering, you know, and serving on these committees on the state bars so they're no longer destroying the attorneys. And then I'm trying to start up a conservative defense for these attorneys who are under attack. And I want my organization to also go after leftist attorneys. Well, we're going to be sort of the equivalent of the 65 project that goes after conservative attorneys. So we have to just start being proactive and using law. Can you give a shout out to that organization? Huh? Can you give a shout out to that organization? What's that organization called that you're that you're part of that's helping with that? It doesn't exist yet. I am. Oh. <laughs> we want to help with that. We want to help. Help us post it for sure. What about pro yeah. se? Why can't these guys? Why can't Giuliani just go pro se? He's a badass. He is sort of doing that right now. I heard that Bernard Carrick, who also is, uh, he's one of the unindicted co-conspirators in Georgia. <laughs> I hear that he's sort of helping him with the legal process. Um, but again, I mean, a lot of these attorneys, it's not their area of expertise. Like just because Giuliani was a prosecutor doesn't mean that he knows Georgia law. You know what I mean? I mean, there's just all these yeah. different nuances and like, you know, remember that, that scene, an attorney who represents himself has a pool for a client. Wow. Yeah. This is so amazing. <laughs> we never expected to hear all of this at this time of the year. Uh, it's just it's just unbelievable. Like everything's turned upside down. I just another question for Rachel. So, like you say, we're trying to get out the message and we talk to as many people as possible politically. You're out there, you do a lot of articles, you talk to a lot of really important people and sources. And it seems like our country is so split. Do you have some hope? Do you have something bright and shiny that you can tell us people are actually waking up to the reality of how dangerous it is right now for our our country and our citizens well first of all you probably saw that poll that came out a week or two ago that said that um is it conservative gen z men are trending more conservative now uh, yeah i saw that and at the that's a good point. I like, I like her. So cool. <laughs> you, you, you just got to meet yeah, her. Yeah, it's great. You're on love with that, is, on love with that is a glimmer of hope. That really is. And and the things that like give me hope is I point to three things that have happened within the last couple of years that I would have never predicted happening. Um, the first one was Elon Musk buying Twitter. Uh, it's now become the most powerful media platform in the world, and it's the only big tech uh, that is not biased against conservatives. Like when, when I was growing up, you know, we had the New York Times, we had CNN, you know, we had Fox News, which does a little, uh, you know, media, but it's just one aspect of it, right? And so we never thought the most powerful media platform in the world would not be biased against conservatives. So that's the first thing. The second thing was uh, Roe v. Wade being overruled. Um, I never thought that might actually happen. So that's the second big change. And then the third thing, I guess it was a few more years ago, but the third thing was Trump becoming elected president. I mean, at that point in 2016, I thought the Republican Party was over. We were just going to be the party of George Bush's and things like that. So whoever saw that coming either. True. Very good points. You gave me some hopium there. I love that. <laughs> Everybody always asks me because they, they're just, I always have such bad negative news. I always see the worst <laughs> things. So I have to like try to give them some hope where everybody gets upset. Well, you cover a lot of reality. Yeah. And that's why you're a good person to ask these questions of. Yeah, I, I, won't, I won't sugarcoat. You know, everybody, you know, they'll say to me things like, do you think that, you know, uh, Carrie Lake's case is going to, you know, win? And I'm just like, there's very, very, very small chance our judges are so corrupt. I'm not going to lie to you, but it d does it mean she has to drop her her election challenge? No, no. she can't because you never know. There's still that very small percentage chance and she's getting all this evidence out. People need to see all the evidence that we have that there was election fraud, you know? And I think too, it's just like the, with the referendum process we're doing here in New Mexico, and we could talk about that another time, but 
oh, the information, once the information gets out and somebody who kind of like wasn't paying attention, if you have new evidence and new things for them to look at, you never know where you might actually, I don't like to use the term woke, but awaken. So, so <laughs> they ruined the term awakened. Oh my gosh. Right. It's too similar. <laughs> Taking all the good words. Him, her, geez. They're masters. Yeah. Masters. Even the military, they're having to go to the walk, uh, the walk, uh, the walk uh, classes, uh, diversity, yeah. diversity classes. My son, I, you know, he's a, a he's a drill sergeant in the army, so he he had to go take a diversity class, how to treat these new uh, Gen Z kids coming in, how to talk to them and stuff, how to you know. It's it's you know he said he he didn't see a problem because he said he already knew what to do, but some of the other drill sergeants there was a couple that got dismissed because they couldn't change their attitude or you know their way. Uh, drill sergeants are the first and last thing you see when you're you know when you're um, going through the army uh, as a recruit, and that's the the name that you remember if you ask any soldier what name do you remember? That was the drill sergeant's name. They they remember the drill sergeant. And they were making him go to diversity classes. He's coming back to Fort Huachuca here pretty soon. He's going to be in Fort Huachuca, uh, his new assignment in May. Uh, Alice has met him, and uh, hopefully you'll get to meet him, Rachel. He's a very young man, uh, nice young man. He's, uh, he's turning 30 this year, and uh, he has nine years, 11 years in the service now, and he has nine more years to go. So uh, we're all proud of him. But anyway, oh, I knew when he was Georgie. You should try to get yeah. him on. The show. Oh, I still call him Georgie. <laughs> like everybody calls him Sergeant Ortiz. But, I call um, Sergeant Georgie. Yeah. Yeah, he's a senior drill sergeant, so he's a he's over a few other drill sergeants because he's a um, he's a sergeant first class. So he's they made him a senior drill sergeant, and he's coming over here for the sitcom, and. Uh, all the radar and uh, all that uh, communications that they have in uh, Fort Huachuca, he's going to be a senior ops commander. So it's like, I don't know, whatever that's going to be. Uh, you guys want to talk about Alice, uh, when are you guys going to do your launch? I think you said September the 11th or something. Yes. Yeah, so um, as if yeah. you're watching this for the very first time, you know, George and I started the chips and salsa show in 2014, if you can believe that in October, and Yay. we moved to New Mexico last year. I've been here over a year, Rachel. Can you believe that? Isn't that crazy? And <laughs> so we're getting ready to reboot the show, Chips and Salsa Show in New Mexico with my New Mexico partner in radio crime, podcast crime, whatever you want to call it, Zeke Rodriguez. <sighs> and we're scheduled to do that. We're shooting for 9-11, right? Yeah, we'll be launching all platforms, Rumble, YouTube, Twitter. YouTube till they kick us off because they will kick us off. The last thing they want is a couple darkies talking conservative <laughs> radio talk they don't they don't want it you know so i imagine youtube's gonna kick us off right away but we will be on rumble we'll be on x and we'll be streaming on facebook as long as we can too they'll probably kick us off they kicked us off already but we'll, we'll give it another try yeah they hate us but you know that's a badge of honor it is I'm okay with that but but we appreciate all support i love all you guys in arizona rachel it has been a true blessing getting to know you and hearing your insights on all this stuff it's very very complicated so when you have an expert on board it's awesome to clear this stuff up i hope people watch this and share this post Yes. Because this is powerful information. No matter what state you're in, you should learn how the legal system works and what you can do to fight back against these woke people destroying our country. And she gave us some really good insight on how to do that. So thank you so much for that. And when we have people like a, uh, Rachel Alexander writing articles and in the mix, we have strong people. And she's not the only one. We have strong people in the party. They just have to unify and not quit this little bickering that they uh uh, there's always uh, one side against the other side. We need to get together as a party because the Dems, they ain't messing around. They, they, they're unified and they walk, they walk lockstep behind each other, even if it's the wrong thing. And it's like, you know, we have to do, we have to learn from our mistakes and we have to learn how to unify and fight as a party. So I'm, I'm hoping to have the chairman of the Arizona uh, Republican party here soon and see what he has to say. And uh, hopefully that'll be a good, good interview. Um, Rachel, you want to talk a little bit about what you're, you're I know you're doing this uh, report on the uh, 
on Donald Trump's attorney being disbarred. Is there other things that your projects that you're working on that you might want to well, talk about? Yeah, I mean, for Arizona Sun-Times, I pretty much, you know, I cover uh, all the Arizona political scene. And, you know, one of the things we've been covering really closely is Abe Hamaday's election challenge as well. Um, I think Mark Fincham finally, um, you know, dropped his challenge. But uh, Abe's, as you know, is only 280 votes apart. And wow. they believe that there were over 70,000 undervotes that were not counted statewide. Yet we have this trial court judge out of Mojave County who won't even give Abe another trial um, because Abe discovered this evidence that was withheld from him in the first trial, which was that Katie Hobbs, when she was secretary of state, found out about these undervotes, which decreased Chris Mays's lead to 280 votes. And, and Abe didn't even get to go over any of the, you know, discovery related to that. So it's just the most appalling, you know, injustice case going on with his, with him, closest statewide race in history. And I can tell you guys, since I've been writing about, you know, this, this election cheating now for two years, um, I, there are so many other cases uh, or, or elections around the country, and I, I cite them in my articles, you can look them up, where there will be like, four voters that were disenfranchised and the judge will order an entirely new election. Why? Because it wasn't like a Republican who lost to a Democrat. It's only when it's a Republican that loses to a Democrat that no matter how much election fraud there clearly was, they will not order a new election. Yeah, we all... become the deniers. Mm -hmm. We can so. sue judges now, can't we? That just went through what Trump was in. For the most part, there's this immunity thing where you cannot sue judges um, unless they're acting outside of the scope of their powers. And they'll never admit that they were acting outside of the scope of their powers because you have another judge who gets to decide the case suing the judge. And judges don't like to rule against their fellow judges. Let's just be honest. My dad was a judge, so I... I can say this. I, I know so, this. So if anybody wants to reach you, uh, Rachel, how could they reach you? Uh, I know through through your newspaper, but uh, is there a website or did you want to give yeah, out? My, my personal website is intellectualconservative.com. And I encourage everybody to follow me on Twitter at Rach underscore IC, because now that I'm no longer shadow banned, I can actually tweet about uh, election fraud. Gee, what a concept. <laughs> Okay, I want to uh, do a shout out to one of our sponsors, uh, um, Laugh for Hope. They're having a uh, uh, a uh, a show. Fundraiser. Fundraiser. It's a fundraiser, right? Uh, they're going to be uh, doing a program, well, a dinner and a program with the comedians on September the first. It's going to be Alice. Do you have? Do you know where it's going to be at? <laughs> Dinner, George, unless there's information I don't well, have. Well, no, no. They have snacks and stuff, but uh, it's going to be. In the past, George and I have showed up. And are you going to be there? So people. Yeah. Can uh, oh. Yeah. Me and uh, Eric are going to be there. We're going to be filming a little bit podcast from there. Great. We usually have him on as a guest. I guess this maybe you can have him on before the actual event, but they do great work. What they're all about is they have like a mobile van. So women that are considering abortion. They're able to get them in there and show them the sonograms and help them. And not only do they help them with some counseling and some alternatives, after they have the baby, they continue to help them. And whenever you go there, it's if you can't go to the event, I encourage you, uh, Laugh for Hope, it's Life Choices Clinic, I believe. And you can just find the Laugh for Hope up on Facebook. Give them a few bucks if you can. They do fantastic, fantastic work. I'm sure, George, you probably have that information. I'll try to share it on my Facebook site. Yeah, we well. have it on our Facebook side. I was going to trying to bring it up so it, uh, I could uh, give them the exact uh, location, but they bring in uh, comedians. It's a clean comedy show. You can take the whole family there, and they're really your first class comedians. You will have a good time and a while last. I believe they're going to have it at the uh, where they had it last year at the Brophy. Yes, uh -huh. it's the same location, and they're going to have David Farrell as one of the comedians, Johnny F. Johnny W, whoever he is, Brian Kohatsu, and um, they're all in support of, li of Life Choices, the women clinics, and uh, let's see, yeah, that 
it starts at 6 p.m. Uh, but we have a an article on our page and on YouTube. So if anybody wants to, and then uh, Eric will post it again with this uh, with this program. So we're hoping that people will attend and give them support. Um, we always sponsor them every year, so we uh, we it's one of the community things that we do. Thank you, Rachel, for being on our program. You've been so enlightening. And uh, Alice and Zeke, thank you guys coming in from New Mexico. And we're going to be, we're, we're looking for big things coming from you guys in New Mexico. And Rachel, I hope you come back on our program. I hope you're live on our program or Zoom because I know you're very busy. And uh, keep in touch, Rachel, and keep us informed. And uh, we're uh, going to be signing off. We're going to be here next Tuesday, and uh, I'm Our hoping team. to have next Tuesday. Oh, the next Tuesday. Okay, thank you. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Did I say Tuesday? Oh, Tuesday. maybe I... Tuesday, I just want to be sure it was one week and not two weeks. One no, week. no, next week. Next week. Oh. Uh, and Rachel, thank you again. I know you're a busy, busy person, and you're uh, you're probably doing two or three things at the same time right now. But yeah, you... but you know, you know, I love you guys going back to the Alder days. I yeah. mean like a long ways yeah didn't you have your own program on uh 960 the patriot i did <laughs> it's been that's like what 2010 yeah we came in and you we were right after you and you had your program going and uh we were standing there just watching you do your program yeah <laughs> Rachel, that's I think on, your that's on. and i were even on your show i remember you had us on your show we have a long yeah. history yeah, 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 and I have that on tape. I actually have that on tape, and we have pictures of that. So anyway, tune in, Chipsters. This is what you get when you tune in to the Chips and Salsa show. And we're going to have the Chips and Salsa shows from New Mexico on Mondays, I believe. Right, Alice? And then not only that, but we'll be on Tuesdays. And then we're going to combine shows like this once in a while and have a Zoom in from different areas. So technology is great. And we're in a great studio now. So, Rachel, I hope to see you again. Thank you very much. Alice, thank you. Zeke, thank you. And we're uh, we're about ready to go out. Christ so, is king. Freedom yes. isn't free. Bye, everybody. Love you guys. Walk on.